plays on us. And there was something that really interested me. So maybe he's from Princeton, but I suspect he has deep ties from here because I read that he is involved in a hyper supreme cam on Subaru. Now, I don't think the car dealerships know about it, so we like you to explain. And you're also going to be talking um, about romance in the Milky Way. Fabulous. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, first, I have to tell the Subaru a telescope in, on Mount Akea in Hawaii. It's uh, operated, oh, uh, built and operated by uh, the Japanese astronomical community in Subaru. It's a Japanese car company, as you know. Uh, ja uh, the word Subaru in Japanese literally refers to the Thetis star cluster. And if you look, next time you see a Subaru, the Subaru car, and look at their little logo, you will see a little pattern of seven stars. The car is named after the star cluster, and the telescope is also named after the star cluster. And so it is not a coincidence that they have the same. So that's, that's the answer here. But that's not the story that I was planning to tell. So, um, uh, Marcelli did a wonderful job of introducing you to the Cerro Tololo Observatory, which is where my story takes place as well. So, uh, so let me describe what happens at an observatory. Indeed, exactly the same observatory that she was describing. And no, I never saw a scorpion. I've never seen a tarantula. <laughs> I, I've heard many stories about them. I always said, I want to see one of those. It'd be so cool. I've never seen them. <laughs> Nevertheless. Uh, I so the Facebook app. Oh, oh, then you like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the observatory has multiple telescopes. There's, I don't know, six or seven telescopes all together on a mountaintop, just, in, just on a, a, a plane that's just a few hundred yards across. And so all the astronomers, each astronomer is assigned to uh, use a, a separate telescope. So we're a little community. She's, as Marcella said, it's very isolated, but in that isolation, you are with your fellow astronomers. And so what, what do you do? You all have dinner together. And then you go up to the, to the mountaintop itself. And then you, you try to get up there before the sunset, it, uh, the sunset so you can get ready for the night's observing. And what everyone does is then gather uh, at the edge of, of the observatory and watch the sunset together. And, and then we argue about what, how good the skies will be tonight. Our, that little wisp of cloud, is that going to come and get us, or is it going to stay clear all night? And, we, and astronomers are all amateur uh, weather people, we, we are fascinated by class. But in any case, so we watch the sunset, and then we uh, say wh whether that was a particularly good sunset, and whether we saw the green flash, and, we, and everyone argues about whether or not they saw it. And then it gets dark, and the stars come. And then it's, it's spectacular. The sky is the skies over your head. We're, we're on a mountaintop in Chile, in the Chilean Andes, where it's 7,000 feet. As Marcelli described, the, the view is truly spectacular. These, the ocean behind you, 14,000 foot peaks of the Chilean Andes behind, uh, on, on the other side, and then this, this starry sky over your, over your head. And it's dark. It's, there, there are no lights, and there are no uh, artificial lights. Uh, so the only light there is is, is, is from the, the stars in the sky. And most dramatically, what we see is the, the Milky Way uh, stretching is over our heads. Um, and of course, once it gets dark enough for that, you run in and start operating your telescope, and then you're busy all night. Um, how, how many of you went to Beth Wilman's talk last night at, at uh, the Sea Film Theater? She described the structure of the Milky Way. We live inside a disk of stars. Uh, we are in, embedded in that disk, and so when we look out at the stars, what we see is a band of light, which we call the Milky Way, which stretches all the way around the sky, a full circle. Now, of course, we're standing here. We can see half of the band. The other half is beneath our feet. And so we can only see half that band at once. And in fact, from here in the northern hemisphere, we really don't get a good view of that other half. It, we can see it when, when conditions are right, sort of low on the horizon. But if you're in Chile, that band of light, the, the brightest part towards the center of the Milky Way, is directly overhead. And it's one of the most dramatic sights you can possibly see. If any of you find yourself uh, on a moonless night, no, no clouds, away from city lights on, on mountaintop in Chile, please do not forget to look up. <laughs> and Billy's a beautiful sight. So there we are, we're observing all night. So what, what we're doing in practice is sitting in front of a computer terminal, sending commands to the telescope saying, okay, let's look at this, this galaxy. 
uh, and take an exposure, and then after a certain amount of time, we decide we've had enough time on this one, we go to the next one. And if we set up a long exposure, we quickly sneak outside and then enjoy that view. So there we are, often at two in the morning, we are out there and bumping into each other, and, and of course it's dark, so we, we really bump into each other. And again, we try to avoid the tarantulas, um, and, and we admire the, admire the view. And then, oh my goodness, the exposure is about 10 and you were in that. So, so, so it's November 1986, uh, and I was there. It was actually my second time there. And uh, I was using the 1.5 meter telescope here, and there was a, a very pretty, also Brazilian woman, who was, you, who was doing her PhD research on the one meter telescope there. So we got to, got to, got to know each other, and, uh, and we became friends. Uh, but, you know, that was it. And, and then I went back, uh, I went back to uh, continue my PhD research at, at Berkeley after my observing run was finished. She went back to the University of Sao Paulo where she was, she was doing her studies. Uh, we both said, she it was really fun. And she said, it was so much fun, uh, I'm going to see if I can finagle a, a longer visit. So she actually uh, made arrangements to spend a full year in Chile, starting uh, just six months later. The next time I found myself coming back to Chile, she had also just arrived for a full year-long stay. We bumped into each other. Oh, it's great to see you. I remember you from last time. <laughs> so uh, I, go, I did my observing. I went back again. It's now the third time I'm back in Chile. This is now... November, no, December of 1987, we bump into each other again, this time again on the mountaintop itself, and somehow things clicked at that point. <laughs> and so, I have very fun with this. I'm <laughs> <laughs> standing together under that Milky Way, watch, watching the stars. Now, one of the things that happened in that particular, I was looking at galaxies, in my particular, as, as has already been described, we're all geographers. So my particular project was mapping uh, a particular set of galaxies. So, and I had a lot of galaxies, so I, I was just doing these short exposures, five minutes each. So what I would do is I'd set up an exposure, five minutes, I'd run over to her telescope and hang out with her for a while and run back as fast as I could <laughs> to keep an eye on the clock. But during that observing run, I discovered a quasar, a particularly cool quasar. So I ran over and, tr and talked her into doing some observations of that thing her, uh, herself. And, to make a very long story short, we, we ended up writing a uh, paper about that quasar. Uh, um, and of course, it required me running back. <laughs> so anyway, that was, uh, that was uh, December 1987. And, uh, and then, uh, she was still in Chile. As I said, she was spending a full year there. But uh, my week-long observing run was over, and I had to say goodbye. Back, I went to Berkeley. I think, uh, Steve, you were, you were at Berkeley at that time. So I, that's actually when I about the time I first met Steve. And uh, so we started corresponding. Now this is 1987. Email was brand new. Uh, and email to South America was even brand newer at that time. Um, and um, so it was a, and of course phone, Skype didn't exist yet, um, as you might imagine. And phone calls were far more expensive than they are today. So keeping up a, a relationship was a challenge. We wrote a lot of letters back. Anyway, six months later, I found myself, I had more galaxies, I had to go back to Chile. And indeed, my next trip to Chile coincided with the end of that one year. So we found ourselves together again in Chile uh, on, on that mountaintop, and then had a wonderful two weeks where we traveled through Chile to see, well, that there's all kinds of fun things that we had happened there. And then she went back to Brazil, and I went back to Berkeley. And again, an email to Brazil back then was even more limited then it was, uh, uh, it was uh, to Chile, and indeed, Marcella, you will, you will appreciate the story. She was working at IMPI. You, oh, you, yeah, you must know, you know IMPI. It's a, sure. it's a research institute uh, outside of Sao Paulo, and they had a single email account for the entire astronomy oh. group. <laughs> <laughs> and she describes that an email would arrive from me to her, but of course, it was addressed as it were to everybody. And they would say, Sophia, Sophia, you've got another email from that guy in Berkeley. <laughs> anyway, uh, two years passed. A very long story, but we found ourselves married. Uh, this was early 1990. And, uh, and uh, so we found ourselves, so that was 1990 that we got married. Uh, and of course, Chile, which is where we first met, is, has very, very fond memories for us. Um, 
1990 is going to be arithmetic. This is our 25th uh, anniversary. And we said we have to do something special. Now, it also happens to be the start of construction of the large synoptic survey telescope, which is being built in Chile on a mountaintop. Actually, not Cerro Tololo, the observatory, but one mountain over, literally one mountain over. <laughs> almost, well, you can't quite walk. It's about 20 kilometers. Yeah, 25 kilometers or something. But it, it, it's really one mountain over. What's that? I know some people who ran out From there. one to the other? Yeah. Oh. So we are thinking about the uh, LSST DES marathon. <laughs> okay, I'm not going there. But anyway, it was announced, and Steve was one of the, the key people, that in, to celebrate the start of construction of LSST, in April, we would have a ceremony called the First Stone Ceremony, at which we would formally inaugurate the, the beginning of the building of this telescope. And Sophia and I looked at each other and said, we've got to go to that. Mm -hmm. So indeed, in April, all of us went, and, and Steve was there, and, and Suzanne in the back, you were, you were there as well, and, uh, and uh, nobody, no, nobody else, I think, in, in the room were there. But, uh, but we had a ceremony at the mountain, at the, at the summit, uh, where the president of Chile came uh, to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there we, there we were looking from the summit of Cerro Patron, where the, uh, sort of where the LSST will be built, looking to Cerro Tololo, which is, I mean, you could literally see the telescopes that we used uh, the, you know, uh, now 30 years ago uh, when we first met, almost 30 years ago. And uh, so, so, uh, so that really, really came full circle. And, uh, and, but we still very much associate, first of all, Chile and the, and the mountaintop, but that view of the Milky Way stretching over the skies as a symbol of, of, our, of our life together.